on the big screen. Out of all the TV shows that ever came out of animation, The Simpsons is possibly the one that made the biggest impact in history. Not only is it the longest running animated series, but also the longest running primetime show of all time. Nowadays, everybody in this world has some form of relationship with The Simpsons at some point of their lives. I remember for a good amount of years, I was completely hooked on the show. Every Sunday night, I would get on TV and check both The New Simpsons and Family Guy. But as time would move on, like most people, I decided to quit the show because I started to notice that the quality is diminishing and that the crew is losing ideas for the series. However, I will admit that even nowadays, there are those rare moments from The Simpsons that can grab my attention and get me back to loving them all over again, like some of the couch gags, the annual Treehouse of Horrors, and especially the new Springfield expansion and The Simpsons ride at the Universal theme parks. Seriously, if you haven't been there, go check it out. It really is worth it. But looking into the one movie they made in their approximately 30 year history, does it hold up to the legacy of The Simpsons, or is it actually as dumb as Homer himself? Let's find out. The Story Considering how it took approximately 18 years for this film to come into fruition, the crew of The Simpsons better had thought up of something great, especially when it's a movie of a TV show of this caliber. Fortunately though, they certainly have. The one thing the story did is to raise the stakes higher than the series would allow them, which is putting the entire town of Springfield in peril. This allows the movie to present the situation in a much larger scale and give it a lot more action and intensity than what the viewer is normally accustomed to on TV. However, it isn't only action that this film focuses on. Yes, it is a big reason to why it is engaging, but it also offers many different elements to make the story strong. Take the relationship of the characters, for instance. I'll be covering on this more when I talk about the characters one by one, but this part here is what gives the movie's heart and good traction to progress the plot, with Homer and Marge's love and trust for each other, Bard and how he sees Homer and Ned Flanders as a father figure, Lisa's love for the new kid Colin, and many more. But of course, since this is a film adaptation of a sitcom, the movie also needs to provide some laughs, and this seems to be priority number one. This film is entirely filled with gags that come one after another for every second that it gets, and they are very well done. They all come in such a wide range from being clever, subtle, relatable, unpredictable, slapstick, the list goes on. It's the kind of film that if you rewatch it, you might discover a new gag you haven't seen before. I will say though that if there is one minor issue regarding the writing, it's that there are a few jokes that could miss their mark nowadays. Since the movie was released in 2007, there are some jokes and pop culture references that are made to be more accustomed for that time. Also, considering how it makes tons of subtle references to the show, there could be some small moments that non-viewers wouldn't understand. Another thing this movie adds to make itself interesting, it's what it does regarding environmentalism. In most animated features, they would just take it as a lazy attempt to give itself a moral for the audience to think about, which they would end up failing, sometimes miserably. Here, however, the movie is not about the environment, but instead, it is used as an integral part of the plot and the subject of some great jokes. By being hilarious, intense, heartwarming, and really engaging, the story leaves nothing behind in order to maintain the strong writing that the series was once known for. The Animation As it is a movie based on an animated series, this is the part that'll be a little tricky under my critical eye. Normally, movies like this don't get up to the quality standards as most other animated features, but the animation does get a pretty good pass and can be quite stunning. It is true that it still does retain some of that TV quality like the simplistic design of the characters and most of the movements incorporate some limited animation, but it's easy to tell that the Simpsons animation did get a bit of a quality boost. Yeah, sure, the character animation can be limited at times, but there are some moments, especially when they move at a fast pace, 
it suddenly becomes a lot more fluent and even more expressive. <laughs> but if there's one thing that did get a massive upgrade from the TV show, it's the backgrounds that the Simpsons get themselves to. The movie gives a chance to experience a new view on places like Springfield and Alaska to make them larger than life. There is even a feeling of a grand scale that surrounds all the characters in the town, especially when they get encompassed by the dome. And then there's the use of computer animation. Although not used in the traditional means, this film uses it mostly for the effects and when it requires something huge to create like the town-sized mob or the glass dome that surrounds Springfield. Visually, this is what separates the film from the series. It emphasizes on everything being big, not just the family situation and what's at risk, but also the size of the town and what the characters have to do on their journey. By Simpson standards, the visuals are at the top of their game. By animation standards, not the greatest, but still impressive to watch. The characters. Since we are talking about The Simpsons, the characters don't really need an introduction. In this day and age, we're all familiar with what we have in store with the troublemaking Bart, the smart aleck and environmentally conscious Lisa, the reasonable Marge, the unpredictable Maggie, and the dumb but lovable Homer. We know who they are as characters, but what can the movie add more to what's already beloved? Well, like I said before, one of the movie's biggest driving forces is the relationship they have with one another. With Bart, it looks upon his relationship with Homer and his need to have a proper father figure, which is why he would go on to look upon Ned Flanders. There's Lisa, who has her own goals regarding why she wants to save Springfield, Rather it be for the sake of the environment, or to have a chance to be with this cute boy that she really likes. And then there's Marge, whose marriage with Homer was seriously put to the test with each stupid thing he does. You could tell she loves him with all her heart, but this movie shows that sometimes it can have its limits, and can result in some of the movie's strongest moments. And I overlook these things because... Because? I, I just don't know how to finish that sentence anymore. And then we have Homer himself, the main character that got everyone into this mess. With the relationship he has with his family, he's the one that has to go through the biggest character development, where despite his American-style stupidity and selfishness, he needs to learn about what's most important that would be for the best for both himself and the ones he loves. If there are any new characters made specifically for the film, the only one that's worth noting that's not Spider-Pig is Russ Cargill, the movie's antagonist. He's the leader of the EPA who's a businessman given a large amount of power, resulting in someone whose sanity can be quite questionable. As for all the other citizens of Springfield, they all make an appearance showing a bit of their character, but non-viewers might get confused and they won't get the joke they're making since they don't watch the show. Luckily, they don't impact the flow of the story since many of them are just for gag purposes. Not only are the characters well represented in a feature film, but they're also fleshed out to be even more credible and developed for both fans and non-fans to enjoy. Not only is The Simpsons movie a worthy feature to one of TV's most popular and beloved series, but it also makes an enjoyably fantastic film on its own. With an action-packed and engagingly clever story, animation with an elevated quality from television, fantastic characters we all know and love, and being absolutely hilarious from beginning to end, it's one of the best examples of movies based on animated TV shows next to South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. I would highly recommend this for anyone who wants a fun comedy, since it can deliver both a great film and a great amount of laughs. However, I will say though that you don't necessarily have to watch the show to enjoy the movie, but having a general knowledge of what The Simpsons is all about would be a good help. Since it is one of the best things to come out in the later years of the show's history, it is definitely worth giving the Animat Seal of Approval. Hey guys!
guys, this is Animat, and I gotta say that I am really glad that I actually got this opportunity to go on and actually review the Simpsons movie. Not just because that this is one of the highly requested reviews that people kept on emailing me about, but also because I remember back in 2007, I actually went and watched this movie in theaters back when, like, I was a huge Simpsons fan. Like, it was pretty much during the height of my fanboyism, if you will, all on The Simpsons. And this absolutely helped make my love for the show even stronger. It definitely was fantastic. But the one thing that I do want to mention, actually, is that not only is this a great movie, but it also comes with a very fascinating backstory of how it came into fruition. Now, as you guys may know, the movie took about 18 years since the very beginning of the show's history that Matt Groening had this idea that he wanted to make this into a movie. Like, originally he thought about having this as a, se as a series ender, but with the way that The Simpsons is continuing on TV, I, I don't think, like, that would ever happen anyways. Uh, but it's actually very interesting with all the different ideas that they wanted to do, and even some of the people who wanted to be involved with the movie, but unfortunately could not. Uh, people like Conan O'Brien and Brad Bird originally wanted to be involved with the movie, but unfortunately, uh, considering that their fame kind of grew on their own, rather be with Conan O'Brien with his talk show, or Brad Bird having a huge reputation at Pixar, they unfortunately could not. And as for the movie itself, there were many different ways they wanted to go with it. Uh, some, li like, some ideas would actually go on to actually become actual episodes of The Simpsons. Some of these include, of course, uh, Season 4's Camp Krusty, and also Season 17's The Bonfire and the Manatee. And also they thought about having some parodies as well. Uh, originally they wanted to do a parody of Fantasia, and also they wanted to do a parody of The Truman Show. But the one interesting idea that I felt like I would really love to check it out, like this seemed like such a great idea, but it didn't happen due to very unfortunate circumstances, which really do suck, is that originally they would want, like they would have actually done a spit, like a live action spin-off film of Troy McClure. If you guys remember in the earlier seasons, uh, you'll remember one of Phil Harmon's more popular characters with Troy McClure. The, originally, Phil Harmon really tried to push having a live-action Troy McClure movie, and a lot of the Simpsons writers were really on board with it, but sadly, Phil Harmon tragically passed away. And, you know, it really sucked because, I gotta say, Troy McClure was one of the best secondary characters among the, like, the early seasons of The Simpsons. He definitely was great. And, uh, but yeah, like, overall, the history of the, the Simpsons movie was definitely fascinating. And this is just a little tidbit of, like, what happened behind the scenes and stuff. Like, I, I highly encourage you to, to go out and do some research on how the Simpsons movie ultimately came into fruition. But anyways, that is pretty much going to be it with the Simpsons movie. And now it's time that we go and move on to a Patreon request. Yes, it's actually been a bit, a little while since uh, we've had one of those. And this one is now going to be coming from Troy Truden. So, I just want to say, if you guys would like to be like Troy, and you want to go and support my work and get some awesome rewards like this at the same time, then all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash animat. But also, if you guys would like to suggest an animated film you would like me to review and that I would put into the animation hat, then write me an email at animatsreviews at gmail.com. So, with all that said, what did Troy suggest me to review? Well, believe it or not, guys, for prop, I think this is the first time ever, if you don't count, like, technically if you don't count Batman Mask of the Phantasm, this is going to be the first time ever that I am going to review one of those direct-to-video animated superhero movies. Now, with that said, I, like, I got a wide category, like, rather it be, like, Marvel or DC, or I can go into the ones that are based directly on one of the comics, rather it be, like, The Dark Knight Returns or The Killing Joke, but this one is actually going to be a bit more different. And with that said, it's going to be a bit more of a solemn and more, uh, you know, touching kind of movie, especially for nowadays. 
because not only is this going to be a review, like, hopefully, maybe in the future, when I'm, when I am going to do this review, this will not only be the review of this movie, but hopefully I'll be able to pay tribute to the late and great uh, Darwin Cook. If you ask me, everybody in this theater is a giant sucker, especially you!